What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, I wanna to talk about a fascinating tool called GPT Engineer. And it is basically like ChatGPT, the only difference being, instead of getting an answer to your question, it implements a full project for you. So it can work on multiple files, it can create directories, it can execute scripts, and is thus more powerful than just, you know, getting a response, copy pasting stuff, and then, uh, yeah trying to build it on your own, it implements the full project for you, or it can also improve existing projects. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to take a quick look at GPT Engineer in this video today, and it's going to be a sort of blind exploration. I haven't played around with this tool too much. I played around with it a little bit and the results were on the one hand quite interesting because it does something that usually large language models don't do, but it's also not too overwhelming. It's kind of underwhelming, I would say, because when you get more complex prompts, it doesn't perform that well. So I don't wanna hype this one, but I think it's quite interesting to look at because GPT engineer can create full projects for you. It creates a directory structure, it creates multiple files, it creates a run script uh, and all that, and you don't, need to copy paste snippets. It doesn't just give you auto completion or individual functions or individual files. It gives you a full project. And it does work if you don't get too complex, but it doesn't work that well when you get more complex. So let us just take a look at it. We're going to start by installing it. And in order to install it, all we need to do is we need to say pip or pip3 install gpt-engineer. And GPT Engineer is a toolkit or a framework that requires a large language model to work with. So it's not an AI itself. It doesn't have any uh, model in and of itself. It has to connect to a model that it can use. And for this, we need an API key, depending on what model you want to use. Here on the GPT Engineer page, you can see what kind of models are supported. You have OpenAI, you have Anthropic, and you have custom models. If you are interested in that, you want to read this guide here to learn how to use it, for example, with Llama. But we're going to use it here with the OpenAI API. So we're going to use GPT. I think the default is either GPT-4 or GPT-4.0. And for this, we need an API key. So go to your OpenAI API uh, settings. If you wanna do the same thing, create an API key, copy it, and then you want to. Uh, what you wanna do is you wanna paste it into an environment file, so into a .env file. In this case here, we have the .env.template file, and all you gotta do here is you have to replace the OpenAI API key equals line with this same key, or this same uh, yeah, name, and then here the API key, or you do the same thing for Anthropic, and then you have uh, the credentials for the for the model that you wanna use with GPT Engineer. So what I have here in my directory is I have a .env file and this .env file contains the line open AI API key equals and then my API key. This is all it takes for this to work. Now let us get started and create a very simple project to get something that works first. And then we're going to try to, to see how far we can go with that. I don't think that we're going to go too far. I don't think that we can do very complicated things, but maybe we can do something kind of interesting. So let us get started by creating a directory, my project, and this project is going to be very simple. I go into this directory and I say now, um, I wanna create a file prompt, and this prompt now will contain all my instructions. And my instructions are going to be simple. I wanna have, or let's do it more like this, build a Flask application that shows a simple hello world page with nice styling, dominant color should be red. Um, also create a second page called about with some lorem ipsum text. Make sure there is a navigation at the top. So that shouldn't be too difficult. I hope it doesn't fail already. That would be quite quite bad for the tool. Uh, but what we do now is we go out of this directory and we run the following command, gpte my project. And it's going to recognize a prompt file. What you see here now is it says using prompt and it gives you already here what it's doing. So it's going to write out the code. It's going to tell you what exactly it's doing. And what you have to do in the end is you have to approve it. So you look at this, you say, does this make sense? Do I like it? And then it says, do you want to execute this code? I say yes. 
And what happens now is it executes the code. Uh, now it asks me, asks me here if it's okay to store your prompts or my prompts uh, to help improve GPT engineer. I'm gonna say yes here, but I'm gonna say also uncertain uh, to not waste any time here. And I get here a total API cost of three cents. So if this works, it costs three cents to get this to work. Maybe if I was hiring someone to do something simple like this, they would charge 20 bucks for 15 minutes of work or something. So if this works, it might pay off already. So let's see if it works. Let's go into my project. What we have here is a run sh file. We have an app py file. So let's go ahead and say change mode plus x for run and then just run this. I assume there's going to be a small problem with this, which is not a big deal because it doesn't work on my system. This is exactly what I thought uh, because it uses Python here and not Python 3. But besides that, hopefully it works. So let's run this. And this should start a Flask application. It does. And I have red, which is fine. And I have my Hello World page and I have my About page with some text. Okay, so this already worked. So you can see that this thing here is capable of implementing a full project. Now, it's not very complicated, it doesn't have a lot of functionality, but it created multiple directories, static templates. Um, it has a requirements txt file, it has an app py file, which has some code in here. And we can also go to templates and we have three HTML files here, the layout file, which is a template or a base template, we could say, we have the index and we have the about page. So this is already interesting. Now let's see how far we can take it. Let's go out of this and let's create a new directory. Let's call it to do app. And let's say that in my to do app, I want to have here a prompt prompt. And I want to say, create a simple to do list application and flask, I want to be able to create check off and delete to do's the results or the list should be stored in a CSV file. Not too complicated, but it has some functionality. So let's go out of this GPT E to do app and run this. So it creates the structure again, we have a to do py. So we have a separate, we have three separate Python files. Okay, this is interesting. Let's see if this works well. Um, one issue that I had in the past was that the directory structure was kind of problematic, and it didn't find the correct uh, paths to the modules, and it didn't work because of that. But let's see if it works here out of the box. And the source directory could be a problem here. So I already assume this could be a problem. But let's see if that's actually the case. So let's say uncertain, we get five cents of cost here. So let's go into to do app. Let's change the mode of run again, and then let's run this. Now, probably first of all, before we run this, we should change this to Python three, obviously. But now let's see if this produces a problem. I assume it's going to say cannot find module source because that happened. Oh, actually, it doesn't do that. So let's see. To do list, add new to do. Hello. Add. Okay, that's interesting. I get a to do. I get multiple to dos. I can delete to dos. I can check to dos. I can uncheck to dos. And does this also persist? Okay, this persists as well. This is interesting. So to me, this seems like JavaScript. So it actually implemented a working to do list application. Let's close this for a second for five cents. This is interesting. Uh, let's go to to the source directory. And let's see what kind of code we have here. We have a to do data class, which is fine. We have a to do manager, which has the code that Basically, what does it do? It just manages here the different to do's in a class. And then we have our app PY file, which actually calls the functions from the to do manager. And then we have our templates, which I'm curious about now, or the template. Now it doesn't actually have 
it doesn't actually have um doesn't have JS. So it seems like it's actually or am I missing some something? Is this somewhere importing anything? No. Okay, this is actually all just Python and HTML. Interesting. But okay, this now okay, it actually goes to the endpoint, which is fine. So this is a simple to do list application. Now another feature of uh, GPT engineer, which is quite interesting is we can actually improve existing projects. Now I'm not sure if this is going to work here, we can start with something simple. We can actually go ahead into the prompt, we can remove everything that's in here and say, uh, change this application, so that all of the styling has different shades of blue. Every button, every background, every UI element should have some form of blue. Let's see if it can do that. So we're going to get out of this here. And we're going to say um, GPTE to do app and now we need to use the flag dash I for improve. So it's going to take the project and it's going to improve it. Uh, what we can do now here in this text file is we can uncomment the files that we actually want to uh, modify for that. Obviously, since we're talking about styling here, uh, the only things that I'm going to modify are the style CSS file and the index HTML file. There's no reason to manipulate any of the Python code. So I'm going to save that I'm going to close this. And now it uh, creates or updates the CSS file here, probably is also going to change some things about the HTML file, I guess. And what we do then is let's correct okay. I mean, it seems to do the same thing all the time. Not sure what's happening here. Let's see, do you want to apply the changes? Let's just do it. 10 cents. So improving oftentimes takes more money because it has to read the already existing code. Um, so 10 cents is uh, fine, I guess. Let's go um, and do GPTE, or actually not not GPTE. Uh, let's go into the directory to do app. And let's run again and see if it now looks different. I'm going to start this and it looks blue. Okay, doesn't look very beautiful. But that was not the task. The task was to have it here uh, as a blue theme to do list. Now let's try one more thing. If it uh, works, I would be impressed because this kind of stuff didn't work when I tried it. So I'm going to be honest about this, it doesn't always work. Uh, but let's go and say I want to actually change the prompt again, I want to say add a login system to this project. For this, use flask login and hash the password. The correct password should be 12345. No endpoint should be possible to reach without um, without being locked in. Let's see if we can make this happen. So GPTE to do app dash I. And now we need to think about this, which files could change. We're not going to change this, probably. But we will change the app UI. We will change Mm, actually just the app UI and maybe we're going to also change the HTML just so we have a login button, maybe. So I'm going to save this, I'm going to close this. And let's see what we get here. So first of all, it um, changes the requirements file, obviously, it creates a user class, it creates a login manager. So it creates new files, this is going to be a little bit more expensive, I guess. So maybe we get something like 15 cents, which is still very cheap, you know, we're still below 30 cents for the full thing. Oh, two cents. Interesting. This is just two cents. Okay. So let's go into to do list application. Let's run this. And let's see if we have a login system now. <clears throat> so open this. And I see the to do list, which is not good. Okay, so we have an example here of this not working, which is great, because I didn't want to show this only working because that would be probably not correct. I have played around with this a little bit. And I had multiple times where it didn't work 
exactly like it doesn't work now because I can create now new to do's, I'm not logged in, I don't have any uh, authentication process that I have to go to uh, go through. Um, and it shouldn't actually be possible to do that. But I am able able to do that. So I don't know uh, why maybe we can troubleshoot here, maybe I can provide another prompt, but it didn't work. So that's an example of it not working. Um, so yeah, it is interesting, it can be helpful, but it's definitely not going to take your job. If you can implement a login system in an existing Flask application, this thing is not going to take your job, because it is not as capable. Now, maybe if you connect it to a different model, maybe if you give it a different prompt, it will work. But right now it didn't work first try, and I would have to try over and over again. And someone who doesn't know how to code, so a manager, for example, will not uh, sometimes be able to do it and will not have the nerve to do it. So I don't think that this thing is going to replace any of you guys, if you have any skills, but it is interesting to look at. Now there is also an additional capability, which I was not able to get to work, which is the vision capability, it says here that you can provide an image directory, and you can then say, okay, GPT E and then provide the directory again. And then you can say dash dash model GPT vision preview, uh, prompt file image directory, and then you can use the images. In my case, this didn't work, I created a directory called screenshots, I pasted a screenshot of a website and I said, uh, I said, let my website look like this. It's not that it didn't do the task properly, it didn't even see the image. It wasn't able to look at the image at all. And I don't know why this is exactly I looked into the code a little bit. Uh, there is actually here uh, in the core directory a file called AIPY. And here you can see how the vision is toggled. So you have your self that vision, and it's basically true if one of these things are true. And it has to have vision preview in the model name or GPT four turbo in the model name, um, or clot in the model name, it didn't work with 40, even though 40 has vision capabilities. But it also didn't work if I used one of these models that have this kind of name. So I don't know why this exactly maybe if you guys can get it to work, let me know in the comment section down below how you did it. But I was not able to get this functionality to work. If you get it to work, I think it's interesting, because you can just add style based on a screenshot. But yeah, so I would say my opinion on GPT engineer is it's interesting. It may be helpful for small things, but it's definitely not at all anything that's like super exciting. And it's nothing that will probably take your job. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.